Welcome to this East Coast Fever vaccination training video. This short training will introduce you to the East Coast Fever disease, the disease life cycle, the history of the vaccine, and how to properly vaccinate animals. This training video shall be used alongside the official training manual available at the Kenya Agriculture and Livestock Research Organization, CALRO. Let us now begin with a brief overview of East Coast Fever. East Coast Fever kills over 1 million cattle a year in Sub-Saharan Africa and puts over 25 million cattle in the region at risk. This probably makes East Coast Fever the most deadly disease of cattle in the East African region. East Coast Fever, which is uh, commonly referred to as ECF, is a disease of cattle. And to a smaller extent of the African buffalo, it is mainly found within East Central and Southern Africa. Once an animal contracts the disease, if it is not treated, there is over 90% likelihood that animal will die of the disease. ECF is caused by a protozoan parasite called the Redia papa and is actually transmitted by the brown ear tick or like Silvus apedicuratus. So wherever you have the tick, you have the disease. So even if animals move from a place where there wasn't the disease, if the animals move into those areas, they will again also get the disease. The mortality may be not as high as in exotic animals. In exotic animals, it can reach up to 100% mortality, whereas in, in indigenous animals, it may be approaching about 40-50%. Let's review the life cycle of ECF. One. Tick picks pyroplasms from erythrocytes of infected cattle or buffalo. 2. In the tick gut lumen, lysis of erythrocytes occurs and pyroplasms are released. 3. Pyroplasms differentiate into male and female gametes. 4. Syngamy occurs to form a zygote. 5. The zygote enters gut epithelial cells. 6. During tick molting, the zygotes develop into motile kinets. 7. The kinets enter the hemolymph from the tick gut. 8. They invade type 3 acini and enter type E cells of the newly developed salivary glands and form sporonts. 9. The sporont undergoes meiosis sporogeny when the tick feeds to form sporozoids, haploid. 10. Sporozoids enter cattle via tick saliva during tick feeding on the cattle. One acinar cell is estimated to contain between 40 to 50,000 sporozoids. Having given that overview, the next session will look at the development of the Moguga Cocktail East Coast Fever Infection and Treatment Method Vaccine which has been in existence for over four decades. The Muguga Cocktail ECF ITM vaccine was originally developed in the mid-70s by scientists from various institutions, including the predecessors of the International Livestock Research Institute, ILRI, and the Kenya Agriculture and Livestock Research Organization, CALRO. The safe and reliable vaccine is a one-time injection that protects an animal for life. The ECF Muguga cocktail vaccine has been proven to be effective in preventing most strains of ECF. Currently, the vaccine is being manufactured by the African Union Center for Ticks and Tick-Borne Diseases, CTTBD, in Malawi, with support from the non-profit company Global Alliance for Livestock Veterinary Medicines, GalvMed. We now come to a key section of this training, the vaccination procedure. The process involves three phases. 
1. Pre-immunization 2. Immunization 3. Post-immunization Let us start with what the pre-immunization phase involves. An immunization campaign requires a lot of planning and preparation. Step 1. Preparation Make sure that everything is available. These include stabulate, diluent, oxytetracycline, needles, syringes, wayband, ear tags, tagger, thermometers, ice, scissors, cool box, glass slides, and notebooks. The diluent must be kept in a freezer at negative 20 degrees centigrade. Remove the diluent from the freezer and keep it in a cool box full of ice. The stabulate must be kept in liquid nitrogen until use. Step 2. Full clinical examination of the animal to be immunized. The following should not be immunized. Animals showing symptoms of ECF. Animals with a fever. Animals in poor body condition. Calves less than one month old. Animals in the last month of pregnancy. Animals within a farm with an outbreak of viral diseases such as foot and mouth disease and lumpy skin disease. Note, it has been observed that animals that have been treated with the anthelmintic levamisole have a higher risk of becoming reactors following immunization. Avoid immunizing animals that have been treated with this anthelmintic in the last one month, if you are able to establish. This can be done when proper history taking is done prior to examining the animal. We now get into phase two, the actual immunization process. Step one, thaw the diluent. The diluent can be thawed by leaving the bottle at room temperature or in warm water. After thawing, the diluent should be kept on ice throughout the immunization period. Step two, take one straw from the liquid nitrogen and thaw it by rolling it between the hands for one to two minutes. One straw is used for one diluent bottle. All the doses of the vaccine from one straw must be used within four hours after reconstitution. When recruiting the animal to be immunized, this fact must always be borne in mind. More than one straw can be used at once as long as all the vaccine is used within four hours. Step three, reconstitute the vaccine. Clip the straw with a pair of scissors at the base of the plug on one end of the straw and let the contents flow into the bottle containing the diluent. Mix the contents by gently rolling the bottle. Step 4. Place the bottle on ice for 30 minutes for the vaccine to equilibrate. The vaccine is now ready for use. The reconstituted vaccine must be used within 4 hours. Step 5. First inject the 30% oxytetracycline long-acting OTCLA at 1 milliliter per 10 kilograms intramuscularly. Determine the dose based on the weight obtained with the weighing band. Calves below 50 kilograms receive a standard 5 milliliters of the drug. Step 6. Inject the stabulate. Inject 1 milliliter of the reconstituted vaccine subcutaneously close to the parotid gland below the base of the ear or in front of the prescapular lymph node. Having successfully completed phase 2 and immunized the cattle, it is very important to carry out phase 3, post-immunization. Post-immunization consists of 1. Immediate monitoring 2. Medium-term observation and 3. Tick control The following are the detailed activities of post-immunization. 
Step 1. Observe immunized animal for 20 minutes. Monitor the immunized animal for about 20 minutes for possible allergic reactions. If any animal shows signs of such reactions, skin rash, lacrimation, salivation, swollen eyelids, rapid breathing, treat it with an antihistamine or atropine sulfate at the manufacturer's recommended dosage. Any vaccine that remains after the last animal has been immunized should be discarded. Step 2. Post-immunization monitoring. The farmer should be advised to monitor immunized animals closely for one and a half months when reactors are expected. A small proportion of 1% or less of immunized animals may develop clinical ECF reactions between 14 and 28 days after you immunize them. This may be because some animals will receive slightly more stabilated than others and some may have less efficient immune systems. There is a risk that these reactors will die of ECF if they are not treated. The purpose of the monitoring process is to detect reactors as early as possible so that they can be treated. It is therefore important for the farmer to keep you informed of any clinical cases in the immunized animals. Step 3. Tick control after immunization. Tick control can be reduced to once every three weeks, two months after immunization, in areas where there are no amblyoma species of tick. Immunization prevents only ECF and not all tick-borne diseases. Now that you have been informed on the ECF vaccination procedure, we now note the impact vaccinations have on both farmers and the vaccinators. Here is a brief summary of how it positively affects the various groups involved. We have a solution which is one shot for life. And that's the most important message I want to pass to the technical vets that there is an opportunity to protect the livestock. There is the second opportunity that they can basically make a livelihood out of the vaccination process because it's a government is rolling out through a commercial model that brings in the sustainability all the way from production to, to vaccination because if, if a farmer gets the vaccine, he protects his animal. If the technical vets sell the vaccine to the farmer, he makes an income out of it and he can basically buy the vaccine uh, from the manufacturer. When the manufacturer sells the vaccine, he has the capital to plow back into the production and therefore the circle continues. And this is one thing that we say we want to roll it out in a very commercial, sustainable system. The ECF vaccine is a worthwhile investment for all those involved in the value chain, both the farmers and the vaccinators. We hope that after this training, you are now more equipped to deal with the process of ECF vaccination and take part in the eradication of this deadly disease. For more information, get in touch through the following contacts. This training information was brought to you courtesy of GovMed, ILRI, CALRO, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, and UKAID. GovMed is funded by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation and through UKAID from the UK government.